annual business meeting. I always remind you that all of the assets of COP are owned by the members of COP, and you need to be good stewards with everything. And everybody said? One of the things you can always do is ask for giving receipts, check your giving receipts against your own records, make sure everything is being handled properly, and report anything that is not handled properly. And everybody said? All right, we'd like to get that business over with. We've rushed everything tonight because we want to get straight into a time with Evangelist Dag Mills. I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how important his friendship has been in our lives, in my life, in our family's life. We have enjoyed our time together. Our families enjoy their time together. Can we welcome Evangelist Dag Mills? Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for your blessing tonight here in Manila. Thank you for everyone who came tonight. Thank you that we are not going back the same. Thank you that we are receiving your blessing, your healing, your power, and your mercy. Thank you that Satan is defeated in our lives. Thank you that the curse is broken in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for COP. Thank you that you are doing greater things, more things. Thank you for the blessing that is upon your church and your servant, David Samral, whom you raised up to stay and live here for so many years to bear much fruit. Thank you for the next phase of the ministry. Thank you for the next chapter, the next season. Thank you for all pastors who are here and all servants of God who are here. Thank you that you are blessing us with the next season, a next chapter. Lift your hands and receive a next season, a next chapter of your life begins now. God is taking you further, deeper into the next important season, Amen. a wave of fruitfulness, yes, a wave Lord. of fruitfulness, a season yes, of increased fruits, fruit Amen. bearing. Yes. On all fronts. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty power. Yes. That comes upon everyone here, Lord, today. Amen. As we lift our hands and we receive. Amen. Your grace. Yes. Your glory. Yes. For the next phase. Yes. I see in the realm of the Spirit new fruits, new Thank things. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. New chapters. Thank you, Lord. New doors. Thank you, Lord. Opening. Yes. Opening. Opening. Amen. So now we lift your hand it, and receive everyone. Just begin thanking God. Oh, thank you, thanking Lord. God we for the new it, season Lord. with new Amen. things, new Amen. chapters, yes, Lord. new blessings yes, Lord. that are coming it, and God. new ways of doing things, Amen. new work, greater fields, yes, Lord. blessings on our businesses and our families, new Amen. chapters in our family lives, yes, in every Lord. campus, in every church, in every branch. And the whole church, thank you. I bless you, Father. Thank and you, I Lord. thank you that as we lift our hand and we receive, Lord, this new season. <laughs> yeah. We, we receive, receive it, we thank you for this new season. We, it, we thank you for this new season. New Amen. season, new season, it, new season Amen. of fruits yes. for your glory. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We bless your name. Holy Spirit, come have your way today. Yeah. Oh, yes, touch our lives, Amen. change our lives, heal us of every disease. Let the yoke be broken, let the curse be broken. Yes, let Lord. Satan disappear and Amen. flee before Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Lord, for your great and mighty power Amen. you give to us today. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. And everyone shouted, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated.
in the presence of the Lord. And um, I want to say thank you very much to Pastor David Samuel, his wife, the family for inviting me to come all the way to Manila to be with the church and to share this time with all of us and all of you here. So Pastor David, thank you very much for this great honor. Um, it's a real honor to be invited, but it's an even greater honor to be invited again. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Now, um, before we go on, I, I want to give you a prophecy that I feel the Lord was sharing. As soon as I stood up here, I felt in my spirit, John chapter 15 and verse 2. John chapter 15 and verse 2. I don't know if you're going to bring it up on the screen. Oh, yes, nice. So, John 15 and verse 2. And this, I want everyone to receive this prophecy. It says, every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Amen. Now, these last three years, for many churches and many ministries, has been a season of pruning. Pruning means some things are taken away. And the tree will look bare after it's been pruned. And you have to prune carefully. Because if you don't prune carefully, the tree may die. But it is a season. It has been a season across the whole world. There's, there's no church that is the same as it was before the pandemic. As it is now. And just as the pandemic was raging, uh, things were also happening in the realm of the spirit. Certain people who were part of churches hello is this pastor is he close his eyes please sit up please please sit up don't sleep in front of me i just started speaking certain people who were part of us are no more part of us as part of the pruning some people even died and some people are no longer present. Why? God has a plan. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says every branch that bears fruit. And this is a fruit bearing church. And ministry. So every branch that bears fruit. He prunes that it may bear more fruit. So I want you to expect a season of more fruit. This is where we are going now. More fruit. In fact, there are some people who used to be with us. They will never be with us again. Because God has pruned them out. They are gone forever. All right? And God said to Saul, how long will you mourn? How long will you mourn seeing that I have rejected uh, Saul from being the king? It's time not to be thinking too much of some of the branches which have been cut off and shaved off. Amen. How long will you mourn? You get it. And you have to accept that some of the branches are gone. Now, the reason for God pruning is that when the leaves and the branches are removed, it leaves fewer branches and fewer leaves all right to receive the water that is coming from the ground so the fewer the merrier in a sense you know like you're going to receive more from the lord amen and that's going to make you produce even more fruits so expect to receive more from the lord 
Amen. Expect greater things. That's why he said that every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And many times, the things that are pruned are diseased. Many of the things that are pruned are diseased or sometimes they are dead or sometimes they are dying. And so the good farmer and good husbandman prunes the tree carefully and of course sometimes after the pruning the tree looks bare because there were branches all there but they're all gone. And that is actually what gives rise to more fruit Yes, so it's you need to know what you are doing and you need to go through and prune. So I believe in the realm of the spirit, God is blessing us in COP and you are entering your season of more fruits. Now, what is more fruit? Fruit means, more fruit is things you've never done before that we've never seen as a church. We are talking about achievements which we've never achieved as a church realms we've never attained things we've never laid our hands on god is going to bless us with that spiritual achievements and physical achievements which are linked there's going to be more members in the church more churches in the church because we are going to have over 1,000 different churches out of this church. I don't think you are clapping in the right way. I don't think you are clapping properly. Oh, yes. God is going to send a spirit of fruitfulness. And I tell you, fruitfulness is a spirit. There are many people that are not fruitful. Sometimes, if you've been a pastor in a church, sometimes you see sometimes a woman struggling to have a child. Then you see another woman having five children, six children, and she's struggling to control the number of children that are coming because the children are just coming. Now, I see you in the realm of the Spirit becoming one of the people who cannot control the many fruits that are coming out of you in the name of jesus receive the spirit of fruitfulness oh yes your business will be fruitful your family will be fruitful your work you'll be fruitful at your work god is blessing you with more fruits receive the grace to be fruitful it's not everything you can explain it's not everything you can explain. Yes. That's why I say it's a spirit. And some years ago, I prayed. I was living with my uncle in England for a short holiday. And I went, went out on the field and I prayed. And I said, Lord, make me fruitful. And when I did, I felt the Lord touched me then and made me fruitful. This was in, when I was in school, secondary school. And I noticed that fruitfulness affects everything I do. If I write a book, I end up writing many books. If I start a church, it becomes many churches. If I have a crusade, it becomes many crusades. If I write a song, it becomes many songs. So receive the grace of fruitfulness. And your one thing is going to become many things. You didn't hear me. I said your one thing is going to become many things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now tonight, I want to share with you about one of the greatest secrets of power in your, in your life. All right? How many want to experience some kind of real power in your life? Amen. And the... the Secret is the secret of honor. Yes. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16. It says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted 
by that which every joint supplieth. Now, all right, what does it say in your... Okay, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So I'm sure you don't understand it. It's not easy to understand. But what it's saying there is that every joint supplies something. That's all. Can you see those? If you can underline every joint, what every joint supplies. That's all. If you can remember that part. Every joint supplies something. Amen. Amen. Now, when you receive in, in our lives, in our, in, our, in our work, in our lives, every joint or every relationship, right, is going to bring something. So, your, 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 your shoulder, right, provides something. You, you, you wouldn't know what it provides till you have to have an operation on it. I know one, one, one person needed to have an operation on the chest and the connections were, were so many, you know, that this individual was playing golf and was said that if you have this operation, you cannot play golf. Because even though the, it was on the chest, it was connected to the arm and the back and in the end, the arm cannot swing. So, you know, there are many connections and each connection connects you to something important. All right? And God gives us many connections and many linkages that are going to bring you and bring power into your life. Amen. Amen. Now, one of the things is that you can have a relationship with one of the people that God wants you to have a relationship with, but the relationship does not benefit you. All right? And even though there's a connection, the connection is not working. And usually the connection is not working because there's no honor. Uh -huh. Honor is what activates relationships. All right? Yes. You see, I am a medical doctor. I'm a real medical doctor. Okay? But as I relate with you, if you don't recognize me and receive me and respect that I am a doctor, I will relate with you like an illiterate and like somebody who has never even been to school. So I will watch whatever you are doing and just be silent because that's not a... You don't have that respect for me. You don't relate with me as a doctor. But maybe I'm not your doctor and you don't think of me as a doctor. You think of me maybe as a pastor. So you relate with me as a pastor. So my doctor side is dead as far as you are concerned. Wow. Yes, and I may have a life-saving key for your life, but I'll be silent because you don't see me in that way and you have not respected me as a doctor. So my doctor relationship with you is dead and there's no power and nothing comes to you from me in terms of medicine because you don't see me in that way. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. So, it is important that through honor, we bless and make all relationships God is giving us to work well so that the power of God can flow into our lives. All right? So, number one, I want to show you the very important honor relationships that exist for us. Amen. Amen. First, number one is you, you must honor God. Then you must have a lot of respect for God. Amen. Amen. All right. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Amen. Amen. All right? Now, you must honor God 
Because he said in this scripture, and if you can underline it, it says, them that honor me, I will honor. This is God speaking. This is a story of Eli who had to do with his sons. And his sons, that is his family, right, was, uh, his children were not serving God properly. So he did not correct them the way God expected him to. And God said, you did not respect me. You respected your family more than you respected me. And then God promised, he said, and those that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So God is saying that if you honor me, I will honor you. And if you despise me, then I will also despise you. And I'm not going to show you respect. And so it is important that we choose to honor God. And the idea of whether you can honor God or you, you are honoring God will often come in when your family comes in question. Or when some other people who are important to you come in question. And you have to choose between honoring God and honoring your family. Or honoring someone whom you think is important. And when Peter was preaching one day, he said, we rather have to honor God. And I rather have to be obedient to God than to man. And so in your life, you got to choose. And many times you have to choose between serving God, all right, honoring God, or honoring human beings. I mean, I find that people have not much respect for the church, all right, and they honor and they respect the secular world more than they respect God. Many people don't even want their children to be pastors. They don't want their children to be pastors. They, they want their children to be businessmen. And they want their children to be uh, doctors or lawyers or politicians or something else. But they don't want their children to serve the Lord. And to, they don't want to give, allow their children to be priests or to be pastors. You know? so, and they don't have respect. I remember some years ago, and this not happened once, but in our Bible school, you know, I saw many families, they had maybe a number of children, then they would bring, like this child has become a doctor, this child has become a lawyer, this one has become something else. Then they had one child who was not, who was a little mad. He had a mental problem. Now, then they brought the mental boy to the Bible school. Are you, are you listening? I, am, I talking, am I talking to myself or I'm talking to... Yeah. So they brought the mental boy. You see, the, the clever one, he should be a doctor. The other one should be a lawyer. But the mad one should be a pastor. So they brought the, the mental one to the Bible school. And they, they don't want the other ones, the good ones, whose minds are working well, to become pastors. So you can see that they despise the church. And they despise God and God's work. You know? So you must realize that people do not respect God. But God says that those that honor me, those that respect me and see me as great and value me, I will also value them and see them as great people. I remember one, one family that I know, they brought a child with a hydrocephalus. Do you know what a hydrocephalus is? Like a big water head. The head is full of water. They brought him that he should come to a Bible school. I mean, different types of uh, people one guy his child was a, a thief you see and then and and he said the father said to us he said when my son speaks except he says good morning or good evening i don't believe anything that he says 
the only thing i believe is good morning or good evening because when he says good morning i know i can see that it's morning and when he says good evening i know that it is evening i said apart from that i don't believe anything that he says because he's a liar and a thief so i want him to come to the bible school but my good other son i want him to be a businessman so it's time for us to respect god and respect the church and respect the ministry when i became a pastor people thought i've gone down by becoming a servant of god he said, how can you leave medicine how can you stop being a doctor and be a preacher what how i mean what what what, what is this it is i mean a very terrible thing to lower yourself to to become a pastor you know they don't respect they don't have any respect for god and for god's work uh, somebody said you are too too intelligent for 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 to be to be a, a, a pastor it's people who cannot pass exams and people who cannot pass exams who cannot do well in school those are the people that must become pastors <laughs> do you have these things in the philippines or it's only hmm. i hope i'm not talking to myself all right now the next thing is to honor jesus number two it's the second relationship that's going to come alive amen all right now it says in matthew chapter 10 honor jesus it says he that receives you receives me and he that receives me receives him that sent me he that heareth me, Luke 10, 16. And he that despiseth you, when they despise you, they don't respect you, they, they despise me, Jesus. Luke 10 and verse 16. Once they despise someone who is sent by Jesus, you are despising Jesus. Amen. You must be careful what you do to anybody who is sent by jesus to your life because jesus has said here if you despise you if everyone who hears you hears me jesus and he that despises you despises me in other words people who disrespect pastors accuse them insult them say bad things about them spread stories and attack them as though they are just ordinary people jesus said he that despises you disrespects you disrespects me wow. read it for yourself luke 10 16. and he that despises me despises him that sent me so in cop you must be careful for anyone who is sent by jesus amen and Saul was shocked to find this out when he was on the journey to Damascus. He thought he was just attacking Christians and spoiling the church. He killed Stephen and went around fighting uh, Christians, killing people, you know, and attacking God's people, the church. But he had a shock of his life in Acts chapter 9 and verse 3. The Bible says that as he journeyed and came near Damascus, all right, there shined a light around about him and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? Who are you? And he said, and the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest I am Jesus Christ whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks so he thought he was just dealing with some Christians I'm, I'm just I'm just dealing with this pastor I'm just sorting out this pastor I'm just I'm just I'm just saying things about just this man 
And I, I, this man, I'm, 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 I'm saying things about this man. And he was shocked when he fell to the ground. And, and said, who are you? Who are you? What is it? What's going on? He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. So you are persecuting the church, fighting the church, attacking the pastors, attacking the ministry, trying to scatter the church to take members, to destroy and divide and move people away and make people not like the church. Jesus said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. No, you have, to be very, you have to be very careful when it comes to the church. There are people who think that COP is just, I mean, oh, it's just an institution. It's been there for 40 years, 50 years. Oh, it's just pastors, David Samra. It's just whatever. Jesus is standing up in this. I can see him standing here. And he's saying, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Everyone who touches the church, everyone who touches even the smallest Christian, everyone who is attacking should remember this. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. I remember one time I was in, a, in the city of Durban in South Africa. And we had a miracle service. And after the service, there was an elderly lady. You know, in South Africa, they have white, black, Indian colored. I was in an, I think it was like an Indian-ish church. But after there was a white lady, she must have been about 80 years old, 70 to 80. She called me. She said, young man, come here. With her finger. She called me with her finger. She said, young man, come here. And I, I had to go because she's a grown-up and she was calling me. So I went. She said, sit down. I want to talk to you. This was after the miracle service. Do you know what she asked me? How many want to know what she asked me? No, I think nobody, this side, nobody wants to. I think I'll go and talk to these people in the corner here. Maybe they want to know what, what the lady asked me. The lady asked me, did you, she asked me, did you know that when you were preaching, Jesus was walking behind you, up and down behind you? She asked me, did you know? And I said, no, I didn't. She said to me, I see visions in three dimensions. She used the word three dimensions or four dimensions or whatever. Three dimensions, physically. She said, I saw Jesus walking behind you whilst you were preaching. And she told me, and she said, it is very rare. It's very rare. You see, many times people don't even know what you are dealing with. That Jesus is right there. As you are fighting somebody, you will be shocked when Jesus will, will show up his face and say, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. Your persecution is directly to me. You are fighting me personally. One time we were experiencing... A strong attack of the enemy and whilst the cameras were on me angels appeared behind on the screen if they have it they can show it to you I don't know if somebody has it here angels appeared you see them clear clear there were two of them if somebody has a clip you can we can put it on a big screen to be nice to see it on this big screen oh yes I am Jesus whom thou persecutest be careful, those of you who join to touch. The church is not a political party. The church is not a business. The church is not somebody's idea. This church does not belong to anybody. It's God's people. And so when you touch the church, either the leader or the leaders or the church or the people, you are touching Jesus directly. And Jesus said, it is hard to kick against the pricks. Anybody who kicks the pricks will find out how hard it is because your judgment will be severe. Amen. Amen. Are you still around or you are leaving? Now, number three. Honor God 
honor Jesus. Now we come into the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews chapter 10, honor the Holy Spirit. Verse 29, it says, Of how much sorrow punishment suppose you, all right, shall you be thought worthy? All right, Hebrews 10 29. All right, you got it here. A very nice screen here. <laughs> suppose ye shall you be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and an holy thing. Okay, maybe you don't understand all that, but just understand this last line. And hath done despite to the Spirit of grace. You've done despite to the spirit of grace. You despise and dishonored the Holy Spirit. Ha! Huh. That's a dangerous one, eh? You've got to be careful with the Holy Spirit. Hey, he doesn't like being despised. Amen. Amen. Now, how do, you dis- how, do you, how do you do despite to the spirit of grace? You do despite to the spirit of grace by attacking anything that has the holy spirit on it that's why the bible says touch not the anointed don't touch anointed people and people that have the holy spirit working on them because you are going to play with something you ought not to play with you're going to touch something you shouldn't touch where the holy spirit is moving and so Anyone who is anointed, right, by God to work has the anointing on him. All right? Do you have some oil here? I want to show you something. That's if I can get just a bit of oil. Ah, beautiful. Yes, just unplug it for me. We need somebody... Okay. Now I'm going to just use it. Thank you very much. Now look at this. You see, this is oil. I'm going to pour this oil. You see, David, the anointed king, knew that it was dangerous to attack people who were anointed, even if they seem to be fallen. Oh, yes. So David, many times he caught up with Saul and people would offer him a sword. Kill him! Kill him! Finish him off! But David said, no, you don't touch the Lord's anointed. And he kept on saying, don't, you don't touch the Lord's anointed because the anointing is on him. Look at this oil. Are you watching? Look at what I'm going to do. You see this? I'm pouring the oil on myself. You see? Pouring this oil on myself. You get it? Now, next time you want to strike me, when you strike, you strike me, you strike the oil before you strike me. You strike the anointing, you strike the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? And so that's why people think they are just attacking an anointed person, but you are attacking the anointing that is upon the person. And you must be very careful. It's a very dangerous thing. The Holy Spirit has a different temperament from even Jesus. He doesn't like certain things. Oh, yes. I mean, you remember, the Bible says that don't, if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven. I mean, there is nothing Jesus will forgive you, but the Holy Spirit seems to be a little different. Jesus may overlook it and say, oh, you know, don't worry. That's why when Peter said he doesn't know Jesus, all those things, that's why he was still an apostle after. Jesus is that, Jesus was the type, you know, he will forgive. But the Holy Spirit behaves a little differently. You want to find out, you can find out for yourself. The Holy Spirit doesn't like certain things. So you attack the Lord's anointed. That's why David said, no, I will not touch it. I will not touch it because he is anointed. Because he is anointed. There is anointing on him. 
And you have to be careful with Pastor David Samra. If there's anointing on him that will put him here to build one of the biggest churches in the world. For years and years he has stood here. Huh. Oh yes. You have to be careful. You know, there are people who just wake up and say whatever they think they can say. Do you have such things in the Philippines? I think I'm talking to myself. I'm going out, out close because I think... Uh, <laughs> hey you want to touch the anointing you will touch the oil before you touch the person oh yeah because the oil has been poured on him so you have to be very careful when you are dealing with anointed people there are many people that have attacked anointed men no, no matter how they seem to be fallen you have to be careful that's why i don't like talking about anointed people yeah just leave them out of your discussions you know i one day i was watching uh, some pastors on tv and i was not happy with what they were doing and saying you know and i felt a temptation to talk then i realized that i should be careful so i switched the channel from the christian preaching channel to animal planet all right and so now i was watching animal planet or national geographic with only lions tigers crocodiles snakes and there's no anointing in that channel so i can say whatever i want to say about this snake whatever i want to say about this lion i can insult them i can be angry with them and i'm free from danger You must be careful with the Lord's anointed. And that's why time and time again, they wanted to attack David. They said, this is it. This is it. God has opened the door. Finish him off. No, don't finish off anything. In God's own time, he has his own way of finishing off. Can I have some tissue or something too? Yeah. Amen. Are you still around or you are leaving? Oh, wow. Thank you. Hmm. So David, many times, you see all throughout, Abba will say, and say, no, 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 I cannot touch. In 1 Samuel 26 and verse 11, uh, verse 29 and verse 11, 1 Samuel 26, 9 and 11, he said, huh? 1 Samuel 26 and verse 9, all right, I'm there before you. It says, and David said to Abishai, verse 9. All right? I wanted to read it. All right, all right. And David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? All right? And David said furthermore, the Lord shall smite him or his day shall come to die. Those of you who are concerned about pastors who you think are falling or they are evil or they are doing something wrong or anything the Lord's anointed is doing something wrong. This was Saul he was talking about. And David said, maybe the Lord will kill him his own or the day will come when he has to die or he will go to battle and he will perish. Maybe something else will happen. But verse 11, look at verse 11. Verse 11. But the Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the lord's anointed hallelujah but i pray thee now take the spear that is by his bolster and the cruise of water let's go so he just took his spear and went away david would not touch the lord's anointed and you know what happened this is what made david also stable because all his mighty men were watching him they were all standing by and they were saying, ah, kill him, kill him. But David said, no, you don't do that. Now, later on in David's life and ministry, he also made a mistake. He made a terrible mistake with Bathsheba. You know? And he killed Uriah the Hittite. And everybody knew about it. But all the mighty men who were with him had learned the lesson that even if this man is demonized or whatever mistake he's making you don't touch the lord's anointed just leave the lord's anointed so 
all god will deal with him himself and so all of god's servants learn that lesson from david so in the future right they they know that you can't just take a sword and just kill the lord's anointed it's not done and so many people don't realize that the sword which you take you some of us here want to be pastors the sword you take to attack god's servant one day somebody by you will also take a sword because he learned how to do it from you i think i'm talking to myself hey so be careful with the holy spirit amen Amen. number four when it comes to the um honor you must honor your prophet amen you must honor your prophet mark chapter six you must honor the prophet Mark chapter 6 verse 1. I want us to read it together. We are going to read from verse 1 all the way down. It says, and he went and came to his own country. All right. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence has this man these miracles? Uh, No, has this man these things? Where did he get all this from? All right. And what wisdom is this? wow now let's look at verse three i hope you're reading with me we were all reading bible anything i tell you that's not in the bible just throw it away it's nonsense just take the things that are in the bible okay now where from this wisdom where did he get these mighty works that are wrought by his hand verse three is this not the carpenter the son of mary the brother of james and joseph and judas and simon are these not his sisters which were with us and they were offended with him verse 4 next verse all right but jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house now this is an important scripture because you'll be surprised that your pastor and allow me to say what i'm saying if you if you don't like if you don't like what what i'm saying about your pastor you should probably be in another church yes if you if you think of if you don't think well of your pastor you should probably i want you to leave this church after tonight just resign and go to another church where you think well of the pastor where you think the pastor is a good person where you think that he's sent by god to help you and to bless you but don't stay here with evil thoughts in your mind it will not help you if you don't take care you'll become judas is carried and judas is not a good thing to happen to you the bible says it would have been better that he was not born any pastor or member here or full-time staff person who is judas judas means you are trusted but you are rather a person giving information and turning against the church secretly when you are really trusted as a top confidant your name in the realm of the spirit is judas you are not john you are judas ah even if you are called peter i am renaming you judas in the realm of the spirit Hmm. so jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor but in his own country or in his own church and notice verse 5 and he could there do no mighty work he could not do mighty works save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them now in the whole bible huh are you with me in the whole bible there is nowhere where it says jesus could not do something this is the only place jesus christ could not do things in the place that he had no honor that is why i started by saying honor is the greatest key to power because it is only one thing that stopped and blocked jesus christ from exhibiting using manifesting power and glory only one thing 
even criticism there's nothing that stopped him only where he was not having honor this was the only place that is why sometimes your pastor may travel somewhere and he will have greater works far away because he's honored there but sometimes they are not honored in their own church yes so you must honor your pastor otherwise or the man of god that is otherwise he will not be able to operate in the anointing that is why people travel far to minister they 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 go sometimes as far as possible to minister because where they go to those places no one starts asking them "Ah, who is your mother who is your father i mean as i've come to manila nobody is asking of my mother Nobody is asking who is my father or who is my brother or who, whether I have sisters or brothers. No one is asking those questions. Whether I have a car, where do I live? Do I have money? What job do I do? I'm just ministering and you are just receiving because I'm far from my home. That's how it is. But in your own country, then they start to question you. Are you not this? Are you sure you are this? Are you sure you are that? So pastors must be careful and look at this he could not do mighty works look at the next verse please six and seven and he marveled he marveled so what did he do he traveled far away as far as possible from these people and look at it he went about teaching now look at verse 56 by verse 56 you see jesus ministry was totally transformed where's verse 56 This is the last of Mark chapter 6. This is how Jesus' ministry ended in chapter 56. Remember, he could not do miracles (laughs) in verse 5. But by verse 56, look at what is happening. They came out, the whole region, they came to carry beds that were sick. And where they had, where he was, and where he entered in the villages. Look at, read verse 6, 56 please. 56. The rest of the verse. Uh-huh. And whithersoever he entered into the villages, countries, they laid the sick in the streets. This is how Jesus went. Mark chapter 6 started with no power. He couldn't heal, couldn't do anything. And but look at how it ends, the whole chapter. And he said that they laid the sick in the streets and besought that he might touch it if it were the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. I mean, this is the type of power that was working when Jesus was able to move away from the place where they despised him. That's the kind of power that was in him. So I'm telling you, your prophet, and David Samuel is a prophet here. To you over here, he's a prophet to you. He's God's messenger. God, a prophet is the messenger of God for you. I don't know whether I'm talking to myself uh, this evening. Maybe I'm just dreaming. Maybe I should go somewhere else and preach. Hey! One day I had a vision. Ah, the Lord showed me a vision of myself. I said, Lord, what is this? Do you want to know what vision, what, what I saw in the vision? Are you sure? Oh, yes. I saw myself, all right, and uh, I was standing there, and I could see my, my skin. Then suddenly, my skin, my stomach here, turned, it was a door with hinges. So I don't know, because it was like I was watching myself. I don't know whether it was an angel or whatever. came and opened my, my stomach, and the stomach opened like this like a, a, the door of a fridge it just opened wide like this and do you know what was in the stomach how, how many want to know what was in the stomach i think these people are not interested i, I would i would share with this this side when my stomach was opened there was not even one intestine in my stomach but there were three power cables one two three like thick electric and they were all buzzing 
so the holy spirit said to me i wanted to show you the power that is in you i wanted you to see the amount of power and glory that is in you because sometimes when you are serving the lord and you are ministry it looks as though you are powerless but it you are powerless only amongst the people who don't respect you i said you are powerless and miracle free and without glory and without anointing only among the place where there is not honor i'm telling you find people to honor who honor you and who respect you and you will find out that a pastor transforms before your very eyes yes i want to teach you to honor your pastor yes many of you have not honored your past you don't know what he has done for you you don't know what he has done for you and who he is to you and i want to direct your honor i want to show you just as the jesus said a prophet is without honor in only in his country and in among his own people why he has lived with you for years and has served in your midst that's where he's not honored so i want you to honor him and i'll teach you from the bible you if it's in the bible you do it if not you don't do it hey. only satan will not like me in this church <laughs> are you there or you are leaving shall i continue to preach or i should i should just stop number five honor your pastor look at it first timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. joshua my water oh, just a bottle of water oh yes you are supposed to honor prophets and also to honor pastors let's look at it in first timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. the elders that rule well must be counted worthy of double honor you are supposed to honor them twice as much especially they who labor in the word and doctrine especially a preacher a word man a teaching person a word smith someone who is sharing the word and the doctrine of god with you he is the person you must honor twice as much unless i'm reading from another bible do you have it in your bible double honor yes and this is very clear this is the same thing that people say you should not marry um, a bishop should not marry only one wife it's this also honor it's the same place <laughs> Ephesians hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17 all right he says he says obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves amen submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable to you amen, amen. honor is important to prevent ingratitude and forgetfulness one of the most unrewarded and forgotten people in our midst are our pastors i don't mean visiting visiting pastors are not the same as your pastor your pastor is the most important and special person in your life not a visitor not an evangelist from anywhere he is the one who stayed here with you all these years built this church you know when i was coming to preach today they took they showed me this building that you have here for burying people and i was thinking to myself you know a pastor's heart to have a place a decent place to bury the people that are in the church when they die 
Because it's not the church's duty to, to make these things. It's, 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 it, you see, you take all these things for granted. Most churches don't have anywhere to bury the dead when they are dead. Or to keep the ends or whatever. You have to build this huge thing for that. Pastors are not rewarded and remembered for all their good works. Build this church, roof it, done things for children, for this, for that, for whatever, for years. The Bible says those that do well huh, should be honored with double honor. You people should be rushing to honor your pastor. You should be rushing to honor him and say, we've learned, we are sorry. We, we, we didn't know how great a blessing you were. If he was dead now and his coffee was on the stage, you would be crying and say, we are bringing roses and petals and what have you. How does that help? How does it help? If you have something to do, do it now. Many people have pastors and don't know what the pastor is. And that's why when people are even leaving church, they don't even say bye-bye. How many people were part of COP? They don't come anymore. They couldn't even say goodbye. Pastor, thank you for praying for me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you for blessing my marriage. Thank you for coming to visit me at home. Thank you for... They just go. Not even goodbye. Not even thank you. Not even anything. Nothing, 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 nothing at all. Huh? I think I'll go home now. I'll stop. I think I'll stop because some people are getting angry with my preaching. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 13. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 13. Look at it. It says, Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. When your pastor has done good to you by giving you the word of God and giving you hope, how many realize when you come to church you are more hopeful? No matter the problem that is at home, at least when you come to church, the problem seems to evaporate. There's somebody here, you are, you are, you are thinking of divorce and you have serious marital crisis. But as I'm preaching now, the divorce problem has gone out of your mind at least for some few minutes. <laughs> Is it not true? Is it not true? Your problems that you came here with, are they not, they seem to be not so important now as I'm preaching. It seems that there's something else and this is what God has done for you through your pastor. All these years, all these years, people here with cancer, dying, people dying, problems with families over the years and here you have your pastor. That's why the Bible says, honor him with double honor. Can I have an amen from somebody? Hey. Number. How many numbers do you have? Five. Number six. Honor your father. Your fathers. Ephesians chapter six. Verse two. And three, honor thy father. Honor, you must see the value of your father and the value of a father. What is a father? Look at the verse. Honor thy father. What, what is the blessing that it may be well with thee? Ha! Ah, this is a, a promise. You see, all the commandments don't have blessings. There's ten of them. Commandment one, honor, the, honor God. I mean, you shall not have idols. They don't have blessings attached. This one has a blessing. It says that honor thy father that it may be well with you and that you may live long. So God gives you fathers. Some of you, your father didn't care for you. You think your father is about, especially sometimes when you grow up with a bitter mother. She, she will talk to you about your father and she will say many things and she will Speak and before you, you don't take care, your heart becomes bitter against your father. But the Bible says, honor your father. It didn't say honor your good father or honor your nice father or honor the father who is uh, important or the father who is rich. He says, honor thy father. Whoever is a father to you, it is your duty 
to honor the person why that it may be well with you that it may be well with you i remember a brother told me a story he said he had a number of sisters and there was one sister who used to just look after her father she was always caring for him serving him at home do you have that in philippines do you serve your father and so on, that kind of thing and then there was this other sister who was always at loggerheads with her she didn't agree with this she didn't understand this she always thought do you have such people here too she didn't agree with anything with her father always talking back answering arguing this that and he said to me he said because his sister was now in europe and she developed cancer as a young as a young lady and he said to me this brother said to me he said i when i saw her in the hospital sitting naked on the on the bed he said i just remembered our childhood this girl challenging her father all the time fighting with him i said and i remembered my other sister always serving him she said he said to me my father is now this still old so old but he's still the same daughter who is loving him serving him caring for him honoring him and their lives are completely different one operating in a curse one operating in a different realm of blessing my friend i came to tell you today there is no way you can break the laws of god honor thy father and thy mother that it may be well with you you can live a thousand years if you don't honor your father you are making the first fundamental mistake of your whole life even in the church there is a father who gave birth to this church who has fathered you a father is not an old man a father is someone who causes you to exist people become fathers when they are young it's not because you are old that you are called father it is because you bring something into existence most of you were not pastors you were brought into existence you were created you were you were you were birthed by the pastor that god gave to to you here so it is important that here in cop you must honor the father of the house who is pastor david samuel he doesn't have to say i am your father you have to say that he is your father he doesn't have to come and impose myself all of you are my little boys little girls little uh, children hey hey auntie whatever you are my lord you are now my daughter you are now my little boy you are not no it is you who have to give him that honor it's not something that he has to come and uh, impose himself on you or tell you that he is great and he is important that's why i came to teach you and to tell you that it will bring a blessing to you oh yes and there are people here because you don't honor it is not well with you oh yes and that's why today we are going to break all those curses in jesus name amen finally honor your husband i think i'm going home i'll stop honor your husband and it will bring life into your marriage amen esther chapter 1 verse 17 vashti did not honor her husband her husband just wanted her to come and walk around in her nice clothes all right but she said no I don't know what that represents but the bible says this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women so that they shall despise their husbands despise is the opposite of honor they shall despise their husbands in their eyes and when it shall be reported king when it shall be reported the king Ahasuerus commanded vashti the queen to be brought in before him but she came not she wouldn't obey she wouldn't obey so every time you disobey you are despising yes that was that was that was the news she, she he just called her and she wouldn't come so i don't know if you have that in the philippines where husbands will call their wives or send their wife or ask their wife for something she will not come 
she will not do that i think you don't have it. it's only in japan i think i'm going to japan to preach do you have it in the philippines or i should Hey, why is your marriage dying why is your marriage dying you see i'm saying what gives power to relationships is honor honor yes you may be older than your husband yes you may be more educated than your husband yes you may have more uh, you may be more clever than your husband you may be whatever but we, honor is something when you take away then you can expect your relationship or your marriage to die and when it dies you are the one who's going to lose the most from it so honor brings power and life into relationships when a man meets a young girl i love you baby oh sweetheart and he calls her all kinds of nice things and anything she asks he she will be flowing she will be obedient she'll be doing it i can do can you yes i can can you i can we we'll just do this now we can do it but when the honor finishes when you say go they say why should i go when you say jump they say why should i jump when you say i want acrobatic they say i'm not a prostitute I think I'm going to Malaysia to preach. In Malaysia, they will accept me more. <laughs> Honor your husband. Amen. Because he's your head. All right. There's nothing you can do about it. It's God who has decided that husbands should be honored. And as far as God is concerned, husbands are going to be honored. Amen. How many want God's blessing upon your life as you honor? What time is it now? Eight o'clock. Hmm. It's like our time is finished already. <laughs> I want you to expect great rewards from the honor that you are going to release. I talk about honor your father, honor God, honor the Holy Spirit, honor Jesus, honor your prophet, honor your pastor honor your father honor your husband now as we close i want you to see two ladies mary and martha ah jesus had great respect for them the bible says a certain man was sick and it was that mary which anointed the lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair wow mary and martha honored jesus john 11 verse 1 to 4 and the honor they bestowed upon jesus has never been forgotten amen in a sense mary and martha are more famous than all the apostles oh yes maybe apart from peter and judas Apart from, let's say, let's, let's rank them. Let's, let's rank them together. Apart from Peter, Judas, maybe John. I think Mary and Martha are more famous. You see, you become more famous when you honor someone. Look at this woman. She came to Jesus. And I'm going to pray for the sick tonight. I'm just, we just pray. Whatever the rules allow, we'll just pray. Amen. But I want you to see. Who did Jesus do the greatest miracle for? I want to ask you, what's the greatest miracle ever recorded? Was Jesus going to Lazarus when he was dead after four days? Huh? Wow. wow. And asking, where is he buried? And they took him to the cemetery. And they said, this is where he's buried. And he said, when was he buried? Today is what? Today is Saturday. He was buried on Tuesday or Monday, four days ago. Bring him out. Bring him out. <laughs> Since Monday, he's been in the grave. Bring him out. And they bring out a swollen body. And perhaps, you know, bodies decay when you leave the intestines in them. 
So that is what they were doing to the mummies in Egypt. They cut open the stomach and take the, the, the intestines out because that's where the food is. So when you take that out, it allows the body to be, to, to be preserved. Maybe Lazarus's intestines and things were all out. Yeah, and then they brought him out. Okay? And then they said to Jesus, saw his body lying there and said, Lazarus, get up, get up, get up, get up. Hey! I mean, I don't know what kind of power that is. It's, it's like me going to your little cement. What do you call this place here? Serenity. Me going to Serenity and say, who was buried last week? I mean, who is in there from last week? Bring, bring the end out. Then I put it here. I hear the person is called John. I say, John, come out of this uh, bottle. And then he suddenly will come out. Hey! And that's what exactly Jesus did. I mean, there is no miracle like this recorded anywhere. And he, who, who did he do this power miracle for? He did it for two girls. He didn't even do it for the public. He did it for someone. The Bible says it was the Mary who honored Jesus and came with her hair and her ointment and poured it on Jesus and wiped it with her feet, with her hair. She honored and loved Jesus so much. And this is the person for whom Jesus did this great miracle for. So expect a great miracle in your life as you start to honor. I'm telling you something, the power in this church is going to increase. As you honor, as you honor your pastor, you honor Jesus, you honor the anointing, you, you, you will see that the, your pastor will be a different person to you. He will be magical to you. Just like in, in the Bible we read, Mark chapter 6, by verse 56, you see the kind of power that is in him and that is available for somebody you respect and honor. So expect great miracles. Great miracles. Expect it. I said expect great miracles. Oh yes. COP is going to see an increase in power. COP is going to see an increase in glory. You're going to see an increase in the glory of God. Great miracles. Supernatural power. Amen. Personal access. Mary and Martha had personal access to Jesus. You don't allow people who don't respect you to come close to you. But Jesus allowed, he went to eat in their house. Because they respected him. And they honored him. Jesus went to their house. Many of us, Jesus doesn't come to our house. Because we don't respect. Amen. Expect to receive close, extra love, extra honor. And one at the end, they, they, they were attacking Mary. And they said, what is she doing? What is she doing? Jesus said, leave her alone. Jesus will stretch his hand toward you and say, leave her alone. Leave, her, leave him alone. Leave him alone. This is the one who honors me. Leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him. This one re respects me. This one loves me upstairs. She loves me. And when Satan is attacking you, leave her, leave her. Leave him alone. Jesus said, leave her. Leave him. Leave her. She has done a good thing. She has done what she could. And today, Jesus is going to bless you. And I want everyone in COP to rise up in your heart and become special people who honor. One time, Benny Hinn came to uh, I met him in Korea. I'd watched his videos for years. And I was blessed by him. And when he came, I took an envelope and went to honor him. And he said something that I found very sad. He said, you are the only the second person who has ever done something like this. But to me, the anointing is a precious thing. And like I showed you, you attack the anointing, you are attacking the Holy Spirit first. Instead of honoring God's servants, we attack them. And that's your great mistake. That's why there's no power. That's why nothing works. That's why there's no anointing. 
Yes. And that's why David taught us, leave anointed people. Don't, 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 don't try to correct Saul. It won't work. It's not your job. Leave it. And be blessed with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Anointing. How many want to receive more of God's anointing? Stand to your feet, everyone, tonight. What a blessing. How many of us can see that we have not honored God's servant as we ought to? Raise your hand like this. If you can sense in your heart that you have not honored God's servant as you. I want you to lift your hand and ask God to have mercy on you. Pray for a moment. Lord, help me never to dishonor your servant in any way, in any form, in any fashion. Father, thank you for your mercy and thank you for grace tonight. We are grateful. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are first of all repenting because, Lord, we have fought and accused and attacked rather than honored. And we thank you that from today, there's going to be a great change in our lives to honor your servants, to honor the prophets, to honor the Holy Spirit, to honor Jesus. We thank you. Build your church, Lord. You said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for healing. Right now, forgiveness is coming and healing is coming. The grace of God is coming. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing and your power that is flowing everywhere to touch our lives. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. Jesus, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. I want everyone to just pray out loud. Pray out loud. Talk to God in a moment. Speak to God. Whenever you see OP South, North, East, West, honor the only thing that could stop Jesus. And the Bible says he could do no work. Let's pray, Lord. Give, make me a man, a woman, a daughter who honors. Oh, yes. Deliver me from the curse of someone who cannot and does not honor as he ought to. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you thanks. Mama Raba, Dobare Mele, Malazombre de Kema, Mande Keleva, Kalamo de Limade, Mange, Tamando, Chelemendo, Melidere, Mama Regele Sebe, Solene, Talema, Tobe, Cabalode, 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 Vela, Mane, Mando, Borne, Jonde, the Zam, the Zide, Corinde, La Mingle, Father, we lift our hands to you and we say, Lord, let your power work in our lives now. Let your glory work in our lives. Deliver us from the curse of being dishonorable. Dishonorable. And to, from dishonoring and despising the Holy Spirit. Despising and attacking Jesus himself. Have mercy upon us. We thank you, Father. For this great blessing and healing in Jesus' name. And right now, as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe somebody invited you to church today. I don't know who you are, but I feel that there are some people here. Maybe you are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Savior. You want to say, Pastor, pray with me. Somebody invited me to church. But I don't really know God. And I want you to help me. I want to come close. 
to God. I want to also be God's child and God's servant. Wherever you are today, tonight, pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be saved. I don't even know what it means, but I want it. I want God. If you are here like that, you want to give your life to God, lift up your right hand like this up high. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be born again. And lift your hand up like this. Lift your hand up high like this. God bless you. Now, if you've lifted your hand like this, I want you to come to me in the front here. I'm going to pray with you. Come from where you are standing with your hand lifted like this. Come to me here, please. Come. Come from here. Come from this side. Come from this side. I want Jesus. I want God. I want to be saved. Come. Come. Clap for them and encourage them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come. Come, my friend. Just stand right there. God bless you. Come. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Come. Let me pray with you. Come to God. Tonight. Come on, my friend. Come on from the back. Come from wherever you are. Give your life to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come on. Jesus, come on to Jesus. From upstairs, from upstairs, you lifted your hand. You want to give your life to Jesus. Come on, my friend. Keep coming, keep coming. I'm waiting for, there's still some more people. Maybe you lifted your hand. You are not sure. Yeah. We have not closed. No one should leave. We are praying. And I'm, we are going to pray also for your miracle tonight. God's power is here. You lifted your hand. I need God. I need Jesus. I want to be saved. Come. Please, if you did that, I need you to come quickly to the front. We are waiting for you. God bless. Clap for them as they come. Allow them to come. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. It's a great blessing. It's a great blessing. It's a great blessing. And also in all the all the campuses. Oh yes. Listen, you are in a campus and you are still standing there thinking to yourself, I don't really need to go forward. You need to come forward. COP South, North, Kawit whatever wherever you are come pam panga come to the front i'm going to pray with everybody who came to the front god bless you god bless you keep coming and keep clapping to encourage everyone to come from everywhere what a blessing what a blessing what a blessing. Now, everyone lift your hand and pray this prayer with me. We're all going to pray together. If you are coming, you still have a chance. A few seconds. The doors are closing. The sun is setting. Come now before it's too late. You never know what's going to happen to you. Tomorrow, the day after, this week. This is your chance to know God. To be saved. God bless you. Lift your hands and say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. Oh God, oh God, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Please forgive me. Please forgive me for all my sins. For all my sins. I have done many bad things. I have done many bad things. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Please wash me. Please wash me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. With the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. I open my heart. I open my heart. And I receive Jesus. 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 As my Savior. As my Savior. As my Savior. As my Savior. 
as my Savior, as my Savior and my Lord. And my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, saving me for saving me tonight. tonight. Please write my name in the book of life. Please write my name in the book of life. My name is mention your name my name is whatever just mention your name my name name is please write this name in the book of life say it again please write this name in the book of life in the book of life from tonight i belong to god i belong to god i belong to jesus i belong to jesus i belong to god i belong to jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus for saving me for loving me for choosing me tonight thank you lord in jesus name now lift up just your left hand like this with one finger in the sky and say these words after me say after me satan Satan. listen very carefully satan from tonight i bind you i reject you i refuse you satan i cast you out in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i will not obey you again I will not follow you again. I will not follow you again. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan. Satan. From tonight. From tonight. I finish with you. I finish with you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Now lift up two hands and say Jesus I love you. Jesus I love you. Jesus I thank you. Jesus I thank you. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me tonight. Tonight. I will serve you. I will serve I will you. follow you. I will follow you for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus for saving me tonight. For saving me tonight. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. And everyone said amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. A shout of hallelujah. What a blessing. Now, we are going to go. I see a sign here, Yada, but not, not yet. Wait. I want us to pray for the sick. Amen. And for any other miracle that you need. How many believe that Jesus is a healing Jesus? Yes. How, do you believe that Jesus is a healing Jesus? Yes. And he can heal you tonight. Amen. Oh yes. Oh yes. So right now, let's pray. Whatever problem you have, all right, all of you stand here, just say you, you are blessed to be nearer. Just put your hand wherever your problem is. If it is your eye, put your hand on your eye. If it's your knee, put your hand on your knee. And if you can't put your hand where your problem is, just put your hand on your heart and we pray. Everybody has a need. And I know Jesus is going to heal you tonight. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for healing. Thank you. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. Oh, yes. Come on, he's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. Oh yes, a healing Jesus. Malama shandala mandala 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 mandala. Malo 
If it is your eye, put your hand on your eyes. If it is your head, put your hand on your head. Somebody here couldn't have a child and you've been praying for a child. God is about to do that great miracle. Wherever you are, whoever you are, I need to. Are you the one? I'm going to pray for you. God is healing people right now. Somebody couldn't have a child. God is giving you. God is healing somebody's eyes. Amen. Miracles are taking place right now. God is healing cancer. Cancer. You, cancer you are supposed to die this year but you are not going to die this Amen. year in the name of jesus yes. miracles wherever your yes. pain is wherever your problem is once we thank pray you, that's all we can thank do you, is to Lord. pray father thank, thank you, you for miracle healing and mercies thank you, jesus. i see mercies being given somebody is sick today because of a sin that you've committed and you know yourself what you've done but Jesus is healing you right now. Thank you, Lord. Receive your healing. Because I hear the word in the realm of the spirit. Mercies. Mercies for everyone here. Thank you, Lord. Mercies for those in front. Thank Mercy for from mercies, God Lord. for your life. Father, thank you, thank you for your mighty miracle healing power. Yes. Let there be miracles right now. Receive your healing. Father, thank you for mighty power. I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus that you heal every single person yeah. oh yes breast lumps either lump or lumps god is healing somebody in the breast <laughs> breast healing cancer Amen. tumors Amen. god is Amen. removing in the name of jesus yes. god is touching the power of god is real yes. in the mighty name of jesus brain cancer Amen. eye conditions you couldn't see place your hand on your eye you couldn't see well Put your hand on your eye. You couldn't walk. Father, thank you for healing all these tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for doing wonderful things. Lift your hand and thank God, everybody with me. Just thank God right now. He's a healing Jesus. A healing Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's healing you. Jesus name right now. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. A healing Jesus. We're healing you in Jesus name right now. Father, thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for miracle answers. Yes. Between today and tomorrow yes. sunday thank you for mighty testimonies yes. of ma many 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 miracles yes. that you have done in our midst thank you. in the mighty name of jesus now right now i want you to check yourself there's somebody here some people here you can sense that god has touched your life if you are here and you can you feel that god has touched you how many feel that god has touched you tonight anyway how many feel that god's power Oh, give the Lord a mighty clap of me. I believe God's power has touched you. Now, if you are here tonight and you can sense that God has done something for you, God has healed you, God has touched you, God has done something, I want you to lift up your hand and I want you to come to me. I'm going to pray. I want to take a testimony very quickly. All right, just stand right there. All right. If, if God, maybe you had a problem, but you can see that something has happened and the problem is gone or there's a change just come i want you to come to me 
Uh, yes, come all the way. Come all the way to the side. There's power here tonight. Power belongs to God. And God's power is working right now. Power belongs to God. And God's power is working right now. Come, let me pray with you again. I want to listen to your testimony. There's somebody here. You had a stomach problem. I don't know what type of stomach problem. But God's power is touching you tonight. Many, many things are happening. Many, many miracles are happening right now. Just come. God has touched you. God has healed you. Come all the way. Come to the front. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. God's power is here. Amen. There's a miracle in the house right now. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let them come to me. Don't, don't send them away. Hello? Hello, pastor. Come this way. Don't just let them come. Everyone who's coming, let them come. I need another microphone. Pastor Merlin, right there. Oh, yes. Am I also supposed to wear a mask? Please tell me the rules so that I do the right thing. What if should I do? If you're close to them. Pardon? If you're within six feet of them, you should. I should keep them. away six feet. If you're okay. Six feet. What about the mask? You should wear a mask. But if not within six feet. Huh? Look, let them come. Don't let them go back, please. Hello, pastors. Let everybody who is come, come to me. Don't send them back. Let them come. Give a microphone. What happened to you? Hindi ko may taas kanina yung kamay ko po. Ngayon may tataas ko na po. Give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, I feel like praying for Am I allowed to lay hands on people? And then I spray Okay, thank you God bless you Heal. What happened to you? I had a back pain while ago And the pain now is gone The pain, pain is gone Amen. Give Jesus a clap of it Lift your hand, lift your hand Let me pray for you lift up your hand. There's power here There's power here I see, I feel the power. There's power here tonight. What happened to you, sir? I am giving glory, I am giving glory to God because uh, I'm almost 60 years old. And uh, when you release the anointing, I am thanking the Lord. I catch it and my vision becomes very clear because I'm using this eyeglass. And I can say I'm like uh, 45 years old right now because my eyes are getting clear and powerful. I'm thanking the Lord. Wow. You. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Have you spread my hand? All right, lift your hand. Thanks, Jesus, for your blessing. He says he's almost 60 and his eye became clear. His eyes became clear and he could see. There's power here tonight. Power belongs to God. What happened to you, my dear? Yung mata ko po, um, biglang lumabo po yung pagtingin ko, tapos... Hindi ko po makita yung mga tao na yung dumating pa ako dito ay maliwanag na po yung pinaningin ko po. Yeah. Another eye, eye, eye vision. It becomes vision. clear. Vision. That became clear. Yeah. You see, God is touching eyes. Everybody, put your hand on your eyes. Put your hand on your eyes. Father, we pray for eye healing. More healing of eyes. Today, thank you for your power. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive healing in your eyes. Give the Lord a clap offering. What is happening? Pastor, there's a testimony from South Campus. There's a sister uh, named... Can you Sante give him some Tondo. volume? Give him some volume, please. Give Pastor Joel some volume. Give a testimony from South Campus. Sister Sal de Caudor, cloud nose due to, to allergy rhinitis today. And now breathing very well. He couldn't breathe, but he's breathing very well. Now very, very well. Wow. South Campus. What a blessing. Another one, Pastor, in Pampanga, there's a sister who had a stroke, name is Sister Lily, and now she can move her right arm. She can move her. Yeah, yeah, she had a stroke. Yeah, yeah. Why is she? Can we see her? Pampanga Campus. Pampanga. Yes. Come on, Pampanga, please. Pampanga. Where is Pampanga? Where are they? Where is Pampanga? Yes. There. She had a stroke and she can move her right hand. Wow. Look at that. Wow, 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 wow. That is a blessing. 
Father, we thank you for total healing for our sister in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What is this? I've been vomiting for, for almost a Please give a him month. some volume on his microphone. I've been vomiting for almost a month and I, I'm having stomach ache, but I felt God's touch and I feel better now. What did she say? Yeah. Acid reflux. Vomiting reflux. For, almost, yeah, Acid reflux. for almost a month and now she felt better. Give me some oil. I'm going to anoint you with oil, right? Thanks. Thanks for your power. Thanks for your healing. Amen. All right. Give the Lord a clap offering. What is this? What happened? I have uh, acid reflux. Uh, uh, lately, I am uh, suffering from a heartburn that I can feel such a uh, deep uh, heart to heart to breath. Now, when I pray, it's like it's clear now. It's clear. Acid reflux. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, somebody with an eye healing. Who is that? He's speaking the language. Speak. Eye healing. Eye. Somebody healed in the eye. Another eye healing. Another eye. Another eye healed. Yeah. Yes, there's somebody healed in the eye. I want the person to come. Come. Somebody's been healed in the eye. Come. What happened to you? Let him tell us. Yung ano po, lumabo yung paningin ko po, tapos hindi ko makita yung mga tao, tapos na yun po, okay na okay na po siya. Earlier, he cannot see the people clearly. He couldn't see the people near him. Can you see them now? Yes po. He can see, he couldn't see the people. Amazing, isn't it? He couldn't see the people, but he can see the people now. He couldn't see people near him. Wow. What a blessing. Give Jesus a mighty clap offering for him. Wonderful healing, Jesus. Oh, yes. Couldn't have a child. Come. How long have you been married? Four years. Four, Four years. years. Four years. Lift your hands. Jesus, have mercy. Thanks. 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 Father, thanks for your mercy. Oh yes. Thanks for your mercy. There's another there's another couple like that. Maybe you are here only without your spouse. Come, I want to pray for you. Somebody else couldn't have a child. You couldn't have a child, you are believing for a child, should come up. I come. Come, let me pray for you. Leave her hand. Leave her hand. Leave her hand. Lift your hands. Jesus. Do it. Oh yes. Couple without a child. One more couple. There's one more. I want you to come. One more couple. Come, let me pray with you. Every curse of barrenness is broken in Jesus' name. How many believe that Jesus can do miracles? You believe that Jesus can do miracles? Stretch your hand. I want to anoint you with oil. Father, everybody stretch your hand. There's, there's more miracles. There's more miracles. There's more. The more you respect the anointing, that as soon as God's power touches you, you are going to have this child. This child is coming. This child is coming. I prophesy the child. Pore Lasmash. Pele Mogaba. Pulindebere. Pasende Kalamado. Palado Lemeke. Jesus, do it. Jesus, do it. Jesus, do it. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for mercies, for provision, for healing in Jesus' name. Father, every low sperm count goes up now in Jesus' name. Every low sperm goes up. Every problem in the womb, every form of infertility, every curse. In Jesus' name, Prosande Meshimbo Buka Balada. Jesus, Amen. thanks. Thanks for your power. Receive a miracle. Amen. Receive a miracle. Yes. 
Receive a miracle. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thanks. 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 In Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord, for your power and your blessing. In Jesus. On the campuses, anybody, you can have a child, join hands with me. I'm praying with you. A year from now, there are going to be babies born. A year from now, in Jesus' name. Amen. The prophecy you believe is the prophecy that will come to pass. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, I am sending you forth. Go and be blessed and have your babies. Don't forget, faith without works is dead. So make sure you understand the meaning of that parable. Okay? God bless you. Do they understand when I say faith without works is dead? Okay. You understand? They don't understand. Speak in your language to them. Faith without works, they understand. Okay. Okay. God bless you. They say you understand. God bless you. Send me a testimony when you have your baby. Send me a testimony when you have your baby. Amen. All right. Pastor, God bless you. You may go back to your seat. Pastor, we have the two testimonies now. One is from COP Batangas. There's a person, she came tonight, she couldn't raise her left hand because of pain. But now, she can raise it. Wow. High. Look at that. Look That's at that Batangas. on the screen. Beautiful. Another one from East Campus. A stroke patient couldn't move or close his left hand. Wow. But now he can move the left wow. hand. Wow. What about this one? This one. Um, ako po, marami pong salamat dahil po, ako po talaga nagsaber po kasi ako nang stroke last year eh. Malabo po yung paningin ko. Hindi ko po mabasa yung dati na B4 na yun eh. Kaya malabo sa akin yan, B5 na yung mga yan. Mahirap po tingnan. Pero ngayon po malinaw na malinaw, pati po yung mga ano ng mga muka. Nakikita yeah. ko na po. Wow! wow! He can see. I like it when they point like that. They couldn't see. What do you have to say to Jesus? Jesus is very good. Jesus what? It's very good. Very good. Jesus yes. is very good. Healing my eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There is yet another eye healing. There is yet another eye healing. Who is that with the eye? Eye healing. There's somebody in a wheelchair. Anybody in a wheelchair, come and come here. Any wheelchair, come here. I just will pray for you. If you believe, I want to just pray for you. Wheelchair, just come here. Let me pray for you, please. Come. There's power here tonight. What is this? Another eye healing. Yes, come. Is this eye? What is it? Breast lamp. Come. Oh, yes. What happened to you, my dear? Earlier, Pastor, you said there's somebody, uh, a lady who has a lump in her breast. Two weeks ago, I was diagnosed with a lump on my breast, although it was a probably benign. And when you were praying, I don't know, I was touching it. I couldn't, even my coat on, I could really touch the lump. But right now, I don't know what happened. It's all gone, I think. The lamp is gone. Come. Now, there is a lamp in the breast called a breast mouse because it moves and it's only the patient who can find it. So sometimes when you come to a doctor, the doctor will say, find it. So as she's standing here and telling us that she cannot find the lamp, isn't it? I couldn't touch the word. I don't know if it got in small or I don't know past. She cannot get the lamp anymore. It means that the lamp has disappeared. Give Jesus a shout and a clap of it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you. Every breast cancer, if you are here, breast, anybody you'll be diagnosed with breast, I want to pray for you. Where the, the give me oil. Give me oil. Give me oil. Stretch out your hand and pray for these people here. Just, I just pray for them. Father, whatever has put them in a wheelchair, we pray for your mercy and your healing. We pray for your mercy and your healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thanks for your mercy and your kindness for this one. In 
Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. One more. Father, for everyone in a wheelchair tonight, we pray for mercy. Thanks for mercy. Thanks for healing. Thanks for mercy. Thanks for healing. Jesus name. God is doing wonders. Amen. Cancer, cancer, cancer. Oh yes. Give me oil. Give me oil. Listen, you know why I'm praying for all these? Because the prayer makes a difference. Thank you Jesus. No matter what medical, thanks for your mercy. No matter what medical thing you do, prayer makes a difference. Excuse me please. Thanks for your mercy for this one we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's finish with these testimonies. Please, are we supposed to end now? The COVID rules. What happened? I had a glaucoma in my right. Glaucoma? And, yeah. And what has happened? And I have my arthritis. Has something happened tonight? Has God touched you? Major. She can now walk faster. She can now walk. Let's walk, let's see. Come, let's walk. Look at her walking. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, thanks for your power. Thanks for your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes. Father, we pray for her eyes for total healing. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Who is this? Let them come. Please, let, let them all just come upstairs quickly. Yeah. What happened to you? Dialysis. You dialysis. Let. Prayer. Father, thank you for healing for this dialysis. In Jesus. Is, is there anybody else on dialysis? Come to me. Let me pray for you. Kidney dialysis. Stand here. Or, or, or just come up dialysis kidney dialysis come stretch out your hand for kidney failure is being healed tonight kidney failure is um, something difficult and I believe the power of all these people are kidney failures stretch out your hand father thanks Amelia thanks Amelia thanks Amelia in Jesus name thank you for healing Thank you for healing. Thank you for power. Dialysis. Dialysis. Thanks for healing. In Jesus' name. Dialysis. We pray for healing concerning every condition. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for all this side. Breast cancers. Everybody stretch out your hand. Power belongs to God. I want you to pray with me. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. For your power ovarian cancer is here cancer of anywhere we rebuke them we rebuke what is wrong with your child he is for a candidate for kidney transplant chronic kidney disease stage four wow. and this little baby polycystic kidney uh, nephrotic and nephritic kidney syndrome nephrotic kidney nephritic syndrome jesus thank you for your mercy and your healing for this baby we pray for mercy and healing in Jesus' name. And we pray for her mother too. Yes. Your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. How old is your child? She is nine years old. Nine years old. Thanks. Thanks. Jesus. Amen. All right. We are done. We are done. God bless you. You may be seated. The Yada room people, those who came to the front. God bless you. You may take your seats. May go back. Leukemia. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for mercy. Who else? Was there somebody who came for me to pray? Huh? Breast cancer heal in Jesus' name. Thanks for your healing, Lord, in Jesus' name. Tomorrow we continue in the service in Jesus' name. Amen.
He's a healing Jesus. So would you stand with me, please? a journey moving from hope into faith sometimes you follow a simple command and they were healed as they went healed, healed. As, they went home. as they went home I want to challenge you don't look around and say well I haven't felt anything yet he's your healer I'd also encourage all of you woman with the issue of blood kept pressing in. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. Going after healing, be here again tomorrow. We don't normally let people come to more than one service, I understand, but be here again tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Be here again at 3 o'clock. If you're fighting the fight of faith, be in every service and expect God's healing. Amen? Doc, we do okay tonight? Good, good. They're checking us out to make sure we're following protocols <laughs> in a healing crusade. I love it. Father, dismiss your people and your love. Give everybody good transportation home tonight. And Father, let people just lay there in their bed tonight and wake up tomorrow morning strong and whole and healthy. Let these children that have been prayed for, Lord, wake up tomorrow morning with kidneys fully functioning. Yes blood return to normal yes, Lord. in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>